A few weeks ago, my neighbor asked me to dog sit at their house while they went out of town for a few days. My neighbor is a single woman who lives alone, and she jokingly told me that she adopted a dog whose name is Bella so she could have scary dog privilege. Which was funny because the dog is completely blind. However, Bella had a great sense of direction around her house and could use her other senses quite well. Still, the owner didn't normally go on trips like this, as she hated tearing Bella away from her familiar territory and couldn't leave her alone either because of some abandonment issues. But in this case, there was a funeral that she had to go to, so that's where I came in. I was basically supposed to live at her house for three days and two nights to make sure the dog was getting all the attention she needed, plus the usual dog sitting tasks. Bella herself was a large boxer with a lot of energy, and despite the blindness, she was a very sweet and well-mannered dog. My neighbor trusted me since she knew my parents, and aside from asking that I spend as much time with Bella as I could, the only other major thing she pointed out was that her bedroom door had to stay shut while she was gone. The first day went perfectly fine. I got Bella to feel pretty comfortable around me, and I did everything I was supposed to. I ended up falling asleep on the couch with Bella next to me. I was in the house all throughout the next morning too, until around lunchtime when my friends invited me to hang out for the day. I hadn't left the house at all yet, so I figured I could be away for a few hours and everything would be alright. My friends picked me up from the house, as only one of us had a car at the time. Then we hung out until sunset. They wanted to stay out late, but I made them take me back so I wouldn't have a guilty conscience about abandoning Bella. I'd only been away for a few hours, but as soon as I got back into the house, I felt like I screwed up. Bella was acting completely different, like barking and growling and backing away from me. I figured this was her abandonment issues acting up and I did the best I could to console her and regain her trust. Unfortunately, nothing I did seemed to put her at ease. She had no interest in eating her dinner, no response to the leash, and no willingness to approach me even when I called her name with treats in my hand. I decided to sit on the couch and watch TV until she calmed down, but several minutes later, Bella was acting the same way again. I noticed she seemed to be staring down the hallway even though she couldn't see. Like she could sense something from that direction that was making her growl. I thought if I explored that area for her then she would calm down. So I walked down to the end of the hall. Bella followed me halfway, but she stopped right before her owner's bedroom door. She sniffed under the door for a few seconds, then out of nowhere she went back to being just as aggressive as she was when I first walked in, barking and posturing. I knew I wasn't supposed to open that door, but I also knew that Bella wouldn't calm down until she checked it out. Reluctantly, I turned the handle and cracked the door open. Bella pushed past right away and went a few steps into the bedroom, then became quiet and stopped to sniff the air intensely. Gradually, she inched closer to the bed, then stuck her snout underneath it. Immediately, she jumped back and started snarling and chomping at the air in front of her. All of the hairs on her body were sticking up. My stomach began to churn, and I remember a lump forming in my throat too, as I tried to call out to whatever Bella thought was there. Uh, he hey, is anybody there? You better not be, I swear. There was no reply, just more of Bella's barking. I knew I had to look. My hand shook as I pulled out my phone's flashlight, got down on my hands and knees, and looked under the bed from the doorway. A pair of human eyes glared back at me. Chills ran through my body as my fight or flight instinct kicked in. I stood up, grabbed Bella, and carried her out of the room, slammed the door behind me, and locked us in the spare bedroom. I called the police that instant, then waited anxiously for them to arrive. A few minutes later they came, but the intruder had already fled the same way they broke in, through the bedroom window. Clearly, whoever they were, they thought the house would be empty, and they had planned to hide until they could ambush the owner when she got back. Unfortunately, since I didn't get a good look at their face, the police weren't able to mount a successful search. Obviously, due to the fact that their would-be attacker is still on the loose, my neighbor has purchased a thorough security system for their home. Hopefully there's never a part two to this story. I wanted to earn some extra spending money so I could go out and have fun more often. So I looked around on Facebook Marketplace for odd jobs in my neighborhood, back when you could still post jobs on Facebook. After mowing a few lawns, I wanted to do something less strenuous, and that's when I found an opportunity to dog sit for a guy for just a single night and make 50 bucks. I contacted the man for the details, then a few days later when he said he needed to go out of town overnight, I met him at the house. It was an older house, probably built in the 70s. 
The lawn was overgrown and the paint was chipping, but other than that, it didn't look like it was about to fall apart or anything. When I met the man at the door, I was taken aback by how tall he was. Probably 6'6", six, six, where I only stand about 5'10". He looked like he was built in the 70s too, with long, greasy gray hair and a skunky smell to him, but pretty chill overall. He introduced me to his dogs, two rambunctious Rottweiler sisters. He warned me that his dogs would probably go a little crazy for missing him, but he just wanted me to make sure they didn't tear the house up. All I had to do was leave food and water out for them and let them out into the backyard every few hours. Other than that, I could make myself at home. After only talking for a few minutes, the owner left. Immediately, I started getting comfortable and looking around the house. It was kind of a mess. The man clearly lived alone and had stopped caring a long time ago. He probably inherited the house from his parents and had just never moved. I decided I would just spend the night on the couch and I started to burn away the hours watching TV. The dogs never seemed like they fully trusted me, but they weren't aggressive either, just unsure and distant. I was glad they weren't mean because I honestly didn't think I could control two fully grown Rottweilers if I had to. However, a few hours into the night, their demeanor changed. They never settled into bed and as the minutes passed, they were growing more and more restless. I got up to let them out into the backyard, but strangely, as I stood from the couch, they rushed over to the front door instead. I was confused by this as their owner said he never walked them, so why did they want to go to the front door? They were whining and couldn't sit still, wagging their tails like they expected somebody to open it and come through. When that thought crossed my mind, I felt a little chill. I was suddenly alert. I slowly walked up to the door and checked through the peephole breathing a sigh of relief when I didn't see anyone. I teased the dogs for being silly and I called them to go outside in the backyard. I opened the sliding glass door and called them again until they reluctantly sauntered off into the yard. I watched them for a moment before closing the door to leave them out there for a few minutes while I went to the bathroom myself. This bathroom had a small window facing the backyard with that kind of glass that's frosted so you can't see through it clearly. But there was still some light coming through the motion activated lights outside. I was standing in front of the toilet, looking off into no particular direction, when I saw a shadow walk across the window. It startled me so bad that I flinched and got pissed all over the toilet seat. I finished up early and I left the mess for a moment, knowing I needed to check that out. I wasn't sure that it was a person, but it kind of looked like one. This being the second weird thing to have happened within a few minutes, I preemptively dialed 911 as I walked back to the sliding glass door and looked into the yard trying to see if there was anybody snooping around without opening the door. There weren't any trees outside that bathroom window, and it was too tall for it to have been a dog. So my suspicions seemed to be snowballing into a worst case scenario coming true. I let the call to 911 go through, and I quietly told them what was going on. I'm alone in an unfamiliar house, dog sitting, and I think somebody is trying to break into the house because they think nobody is home. I then had enough time to whisper the address to them before I heard a noise come from the inside of the house. It sounded like the garage. I told the operator to hold on and I put my phone in my pocket. I remember them urging me at the last second not to go investigating anything, but I felt like I knew what I was doing. I crept up to the door into the garage and put my ear up against it, but I didn't hear anything else. I wanted to check it visually though, so I slowly opened the door. Suddenly, the doorknob was ripped out of my hand and it flew open. The owner of the house was towering over me in the doorway, holding a huge knife. Before I had time to react, he grabbed me by the collar and yanked me over so that my face was within an inch of the blade. Then he started dragging me into the garage and over to the door into the cellar. Get in there, he said. And so I did, not knowing what else I could do. I was now climbing down into the horrifying darkness of the cellar with the man holding me at knife point a mere step behind me. When I got to the bottom, I strained to see but there wasn't much down there. Just a bunch of junk piled up in the corners and in the middle, a camera on a tripod. Out of nowhere, I was kicked in the back and I fell to the ground. Don't get up, he said. The man commanded me as he walked over to the tripod and turned on the camera, readjusting it so it pointed at me. It's time for you to get paid, he said. $50, right? I was too scared to say anything back. All I could do was nod. Then he grabbed a bag full of coins from a nearby shelf, opened it, then poured the entire thing on the ground in front of me. It looked to be $50 all right, but its entirety was in quarters. Now pick it up, he said. 
I followed the command, starting to pick up each one by hand. No, 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 not with your hands. Pick them up with your mouth. And make sure the camera sees. I allowed a whimper as the tears of humiliation and fear started to well up, but I had no other choice. This guy was way too big for me to fight. I got on my knees and I bent over, kissing the filthy cellar floor until I managed to get one of the quarters between my teeth. At that point, confused and dreading what I knew he would say next, I looked up to him as if I asked, What now? Now eat them, was his response. I didn't think my heart could sink any lower into my stomach, but in that moment, it did. I whimpered again and let the quarter fall back onto my tongue. Then I forced myself to swallow it, nearly gagging as it went down. I looked up at the man again, about to plead with him to stop all of this, but he wasn't about that. Keep going until they're all gone. You want to get paid, don't you? There was nothing I could do to challenge him. I just had to wait and hope that help would come. I didn't forget that my phone was still on with 911 in my pocket, but I had no idea how long it would take for them to get there. In truth, I think I was forced to eat about $10 worth of quarters before the cops started to bust into the house. As soon as the homeowner heard them coming, he turned tail and ran. It was too late though. They had the whole house surrounded and they got him right away. Then they eventually found me in the cellar, dry heaving wretchedly and sobbing like a pitiful mess. Swallowing one quarter is fine, maybe. That'll pass through. Forty quarters though, that's a different story. I had to get taken to the hospital and put to sleep for surgery so they could clear the blockage. I was still finding change in the toilet bowl for weeks after that, which tends to put an unfortunate note of humor on my trauma from the experience. But I guess I can only cry about it or laugh about it, and I know which one I'd rather do. After all, I'm only alive because that dinosaur forgot how cell phones work. I used to have a great side gig with a family friend where I would walk her dog for her every night, but then it all got ruined the other day. The family friend is an older woman who lives in a high-rise apartment in the downtown area of where I live. And I live in a house in one of the nearby suburbs, so it's an easy job for a quick couple of bucks. My boss, which I say lightly as it was a chill job, can't see very well at night now that she's gotten old, so I would show up around 8pm to get the dog out for one last walk before they went to bed. The dog is just one of those tiny poodle things that you'd expect an old lady to have, so it was super easy to walk. The only problem is that I have to watch out for the sketchy people that come out of the woodwork after dark. My boss always stressed to me that I should be super careful because I'm a young girl walking around by myself and I would just shrug it off and say I'd be fine. However, I know now that it was a serious warning because I was fine right up until the moment that I wasn't. It started out like any other night. I walked the dog over to the little park across the street so it could wander around and do its thing. But at some point, I noticed there was a sketchy man on the other side of the park, standing in a dark spot beneath a tree. He was looking at me. I expected him to look away, but he didn't. He just kept staring. He was almost 100 feet away, but it still freaked me out. I pretended not to notice him still staring at me while I gave the dog another couple seconds to do its business, getting ready to cut the walk short. Then I saw out of the corner of my eye that the man was walking towards me. I quickly picked the dog up and started power walking for the door back into the high rise. I kept looking over my shoulder and seeing that he was still following me and he was even getting closer. I caught glimpses of his face. His eyes were fixated on me and his jaw was clenched. I picked up my pace and finally made it to the door. I scanned my key fob to get in and I rushed inside hoping that the door would automatically lock before he got there, but a fraction of a second before the lock re-engaged. He swung the door wide open, then walked right in. I swore inside my head and I jammed the button to call the elevator. Then I stared at the ground in front of me, hoping that anybody would show up. He pretended to wait for the elevator, except he wouldn't take his eyes off me and he kept taking steps closer. I refused to make eye contact, but I could still see him. He was your typical cracked out hobo. You know, the scary ones that twitch and scream at people when they walk by. And I could smell the filth he was covered in. There was no way that he lived in that building, but he had the nerve to ask me if I did. Hey, do you live here? I ignored him. Just a few moments later, the elevator arrived and I stepped on absentmindedly. Of course, he followed right after. I pressed the button for the floor I wanted to go to as he kept trying to talk to me. Oh, that's my floor too. We could be neighbors. Do you live alone? When he asked that, I knew I was in serious danger. My heart was pounding. It was an agonizing 30 seconds which I spent praying to God he wouldn't try anything in the elevator. 
when it stopped, and as I walked out, the man followed. But thankfully, I didn't have to go far. My boss's apartment was the first one by the side elevator, so when I got to the door, I did the only thing I could think of, and I started pounding on the door like I was the police. I needed to somehow warn my boss that something was wrong when she came to the door, and I was hoping that banging my fist against it nonstop would be enough. I could feel the stalker inching closer and closer behind me. It must have been at the last possible second before he grabbed me when my boss finally came to the door. She opened it just a crack and glared through the window with a perplexed look on her face, and then she saw me, and then the guy. And suddenly, she switched up and opened the door the entire way and pulled out a gun. One of those cute little purse pistols, but like still a full on gun, and it did the trick. The guy saw I wasn't alone and the person I was with was showing them the inside of a barrel and his cracked out crazy mind didn't even think about the fact it was an old lady. He just ran like hell and disappeared down the stairwell. Afterwards, my boss ushered me inside of her apartment and started to laugh, telling me that the thing hadn't been loaded in 20 years, but she keeps it by the door for just this sort of occasion. Gotta love old-fashioned southerners for that. I'm never gonna work for her again though, not after what happened.